Hello, everyone, and welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. Today, we are going to do a tier list for every single series four and five card. We have a deck also for you for every series four and five card. This video is going to be absolutely huge. I know I'm on vacation. I wanted to leave you with something special before I headed out. There is no new way, no new OTA, no new card to spoil this list this is exactly the list that i would use but also there is a pax east exclusive captain america card and card back you can get that exclusive from me thanks to one of our wonderful wonderful viewers i have one of these to give away i might have two if i have a second it'll be for tomorrow's video all you have to do is subscribe to this channel and leave a like and comment on this video if you're willing to I would really appreciate if you helped share this. The winner will be chosen from this video. When I get home, it'll be announced on Thursday's video of this week. Someone is going to get this absolute, incredibly rare exclusive. I don't have this. I'm not taking the code. I'm giving it away to you guys. So please make sure you sub, comment, like, and you can win this, the single most exclusive thing to own in Marvel Snap currently, the PAX East exclusive bundle. All right, our first Series 4 card, we're going to kick it off with Series 4, then we'll talk Series 5, is Dokken. So Dokken is a 3-4 that on reveal as a Muramasa Shard. The Muramasa Shard that is added, when it's dis it's a 1-1, one -one. when discarded or destroyed, it doubles Dokken's power. If you get multiple shards, he can get really big, but he is very often replaced. He's not required for most decks. He's a nice card to have, but not an important one. He is really strong in discard, but... Um, he's often been replaced by Series 5 cards at this point. Cards like Proxima took Dokken out of the best discard list. He can be good in one specific variety of Surfer as well. Surfer that's running buffs really likes Dokken because the buffs can be doubled on Dokken. Um, he needs Modok or Shaw to be good, so don't get him before one of those cards if you have a choice. And he has exactly one deck where he is completely required, the Perry Manilow Double Up Dokken list. So he is a lower tier card that you can get. This is that Perry Manilow deck we talked about. Please note, he is series four. That deck is an expensive deck. So unless you are, have the other cards for this, he is not a requirement. Ravona series four, Modok is series four, Supergiant is series five, all along with Dokken. So not a huge must have. Cool. Our next card is Darkhawk. Darkhawk is now a 5 4 after forever as being a 4 0 was a 4-1 before that um he gets he's an ongoing he gets plus two power for each card in your opponent's deck he's a fairly similar card to devil dino and ronin we're still getting a grasp on him uh, the thanos meta has not been kind to him because thanos runs blob his decks used to be really solid into thanos but with blob in the meta and with thanos so good he hasn't seen nearly as much play so he's a sort of volatile rating for the time being he is an absolute build around he has a direct package of two cards that are basically always played with him you play him you're also playing korg and rock slide so if you want korg and rock slide you often want well you basically always want dark hawk luckily those are earlier series cards so they're not terribly difficult to get he used to be married to zabu that is no longer the case um he is a lot of power he often ends up like 16 power he's at least 10 but often ends up like 16 power especially if you run black widow too and that power comes with a bunch of disruption being able to blank opponents draws with rocks is very strong he is more of a support card now though he is not the build around that he was but it is entirely possible he's meta after thanos again we don't know thanos has warped the meta around himself so we will see once thanos is brought in line and eventually thanos will be eventually everything at marvel snap is this is my favorite current dark hawk list this is the one i actually hit infinite with it's made by our friend ika who's on the podcast that we released saturday if you want to hear more from ika so this is um a list that basically says I'm going to disrupt the crap out of everything by doing a bunch of rocks, by putting a bunch of cards on your side of the board with Sentry and Annihilus and Hood, and by using Cosmo and Scarlet Witch. In addition, it's got Scar because Scar is really big. If you're not seeing a lot of Mobius, this is one of the best decks in Marvel Snap. If you are seeing a lot of Mobius, it's not. I think Darkhawk basically always wants to be put in a package with other high series cards, though. In this case, Call Obsidian and Annihilus. Sometimes that other package involves different cards, but because of Darkhawk's cost, He's a little harder to use. Fair warning. Oh, this one also has Nico in it. Nico is not a requirement for this list, though. She's just very good. All right, our next card is Echo. Echo, I'm sorry, I pulled all of these during the Avengers X-Men uh, event. Please ignore them. That event is over. 
Echo is a 1-2. After your opponent plays an ongoing card here, remove its abilities. Echo has no animation until she happens, which means opponents don't get a warning, and people often treat her like she's invisible and just play cards on top of her. That's awesome for you, dear opponents of Echo, because what you get is um, basically a 1-2 that your opponent like ruins one of their cards with. This is not a required card in any deck, but it is often a required card, or has been a required card for certain metas, those being heavy ongoing metas. When the Onslaught Tribunal stuff was everywhere, all of a sudden Echo was an absolute, absolutely phenomenal card. Outside of that, she's filler. She's basically filler. She does something strong, but other cards have the basic same basic effect, i.e. if you don't have her, you have Enchantress, right? You will get Rogue if you don't have Rogue immediately. So while she's very good, she's not a requirement. Um, she does go in Zoo and Lockdown, and she counters ongoing metas, Professor X, and Cosmo. Particularly, her other real use outside of this ongoing counter is if you want to do Wong combos and not do Zola with them, she will prevent Cosmo from ruining your life. Not that Cosmo is some huge meta force right now. All right, so this is Bigger Dumber Idiots by our friend Gunny T, who's also on that podcast with Ika. Um, basically, what your goal here is is to play as many big things early as you can, and then you can end the game with Scar and other stuff. Scar Maximus Armor, for example, is just incredibly powerful at the end. And if you don't get that combo going, you can play Blob. Echo basically says, I don't want to deal with my opponent's ongoing crap. Like, an Iron Man can get too big for me to deal with. So I've got an Echo, and I've got a Cull in that lane, and now, like, you have to fairly go taller than me, which is hard. All right, next up, we have Ghost Spider. Ghost Spider is a 1-2 on reveal. Last card you played moves here. Um, she used to be a season pass card, so hopefully you got her when she was. She was a 2-3 and way worse. She is an absolute requirement for move in Phoenix Force deck, so if you want her, go get this card. Those decks are, however, very hard to play. I would argue that move and the best Phoenix Force decks are the hardest decks to play in all of Marvel Snap, bar none in Marvel Snap's history. So if you're looking for that, you're going to need Ghost Spider, but be careful because it's possible you get those cards and they're really hard to play. Um, she's occasionally a good tech piece for other big card decks. Uh, I know Paper really, really likes doing that, where he likes playing cards like Dr. Octopus and then using Ghost Spider to like move that power elsewhere. Move can be really strong without extra, a lot of extra Series 4 or 5 support, so very often Ghost Spider will be all you need for a really good move deck, but you're obviously going to need Phoenix for Phoenix Force. All right, this is our friend Finn Snaps deck. This is um, the Phoenix Force deck that he's been playing. I need to cover this in full at some point, but basically it does the Shuri Nimrod thing where it can go Shuri Nimrod, Deathlock, um, Deathlock, Venom, or Carnage, and then make, put a bunch of 12 power Nimrods all over, or it can do a giant Human Torch and then play a Tribunal and spread the like 100-ish power Human Torch all over. Ghost Spider is amazing for that play. And of course the Phoenix Force shenanigans that uh, everyone knows with multiple men work as well so any of these options are absolutely stellar this is um look phoenix force is a tier one deck in the hands of like 15 players in the world if you think you can be one of those 15 it's really good to get ghost spider uh tribunal is not required for this deck this deck often runs arnim zola instead so what you're seeing here is ghost spider phoenix force and nimrod so three series four cards or and nico sorry nico's actually very required for the phoenix source versions but not for move decks cool there's ghost spider Next up, we have Havoc, and he is not a required card. I currently have him in my favorite list, but he's still not required. He could be Iron Man, right? I just think um, he's really great in the bounce deck that um, Gnome is playing. So if a Gnome plays double underscore between it on Twitch, you can see a really great bounce deck. Um, I also covered that deck on Friday, so if you want to check Friday's video, you can find out more about that. Sorry, I guess he's a 2-0, and after each turn, you lose one max energy, and this gains plus four power. So he gets really big. You basically usually want to play him on turn five, and a 2 eight's great. You play him decks that run Bast, and then he's a 2-11. Awesome. Um, he is a very late grab. He's really, really not worth getting, although I think I'm going to move him up a tier from where he was in, my, in the tier list when we get to the end of this, and I'm going to tier all of these at the end. So this is a Glenn Jones deck where he's using Havoc. This is basically a Hella Counter deck, but it's also just really good. It can win through Mr. Negative. When it doesn't see Negative, it can Loki. Uh, negative Havoc is absolutely stellar. And Negative's also just sort of like really good. Um, like if you've got Ravona on turn five with either Iron Man or Professor X, it's a game winning card. And so that ne Havoc is really powerful in very, very rare, but very competent shells. Next up, we have Hitmonkey. I think this is the... Um, First, like, 
must grab series four card although i guess go it's between this and ghost spider this is another former season pass card so again if you've been playing long enough hopefully you're a season pass buyer season pass is an amazing deal three two used to be a two l three two gain plus two power for each other card you played this turn hit monkey's best friend is usually mysterio because mysterio means that you get plus six power in hit monkey that makes him a three eight and mister um which is a 10 power play for five energy right if you like Bounce, you need this. This is like the best card in Bounce. We thought it was Werewolf. It is not. It's Hit Monkey at this point. The change in cost to Werewolf pushed it out in favor of Hit Monkey. Um, this works in a few zoo esque decks and decks that run Thors because if you go, if you run enough zeros, you have enough cards to play with Hit Monkey. Um, this is not usually meta, but when Bounce is, he is. And this really likes Kitty Pride as a higher series card, but also has combos with cards like Beta Ray Bill and Pixie by extension and Black Swan. All right, this is a Dot Geo's version of Bounce. I wanted to show you the one without Havoc here because, well, it's easier to afford because it's running Iron Man and not Havoc. The main difference between the two builds is Havoc. There's one other card different, I believe, but I don't really care. Oh, um, I don't actually, I don't remember. I swear there's one other card different. Either way, the other one runs Havoc. This one runs Iron Man. Um, there's something in exchange for Hawkeye, because Hawkeye's not on the other list. I just don't recall what off the top of my head. So this is a very, very strong list. It's really cool, really fun to play. Nico is not a requirement here, but Kitty is, and Hitmonkey is, and I think Elsa is pretty freaking close to a requirement at this point in the meta. Oh, it's Hope Summers. Hope Summers for Hawkeye. Um, so you can run Hope. There's a lot of different variations. You are going to basically always need Hitmonkey and Kitty, and you probably really want Elsa at this point. Still... Bounce is one of the best decks, and one of the decks that looks to rise, as Thanos will hopefully relatively soon fall. All right, next up we have Howard the Duck. He is a 1-2, ongoing, tap this to see the top card of your deck. He's one of the least played cards in the game. He's all but guaranteed to series drop, and don't get him. He's fun, but 100% cuttable, even in the best of decks. So don't bother with Howard, you're going to regret it. He's not worthwhile. Cool? He is very fun, though. He's just a card you'll get late. Also, like, I'm pretty sure he's going to series drop. Series drop should be happening in the next month, two months at most, unless they lied by saying them they're going to do them more often, right? So I assume series drops are going to happen, and there's no reason to keep him high series. He's going to fall. This is a deck he fits in. This deck is better without Howard. It's nice to be able to know what Jubilee and Iron Lad are going to hit, but since almost every hit is a good one, it is in no way a requirement. This one is Safety Blades deck, just so everyone knows. Next up, we have Kitty. Kitty is um, a 1-1. One, one. When this returns to your hand, plus one power, and it returns at the start of each turn. Again, ignore the Avengers versus X-Men thing. So this used to be the best card in the game, but, na game, but now is an enabler of other cards. Um, this is required for every Hope Summers deck, more or less, outside of Thanos. So if you got Hope, get Kitty. It's also required for Elsa Bloodstone, which is also going to need Silk and Jeff as other high series cards. Kitty is the only reason to play Angela and fits in basically every bounce and or move deck. She eventually falls out of the meta and she always comes back. Her ability is completely unique in the game and thus too valuable to not have access to. This is Desmond's Silky Smooth deck. Desmond is a Korean player. You can check out Desmond at Desmond Korea on YouTube. Phenomenal player, really, really nice person, and we'd love if you helped show some support for Desmond. But Desmond is one of the players that shapes the meta that you don't know. So this deck basically says I can bounce Silk um, between my Angela and Craven, right? I can buff my Angela. I can get buffs from Elsa over and over again. I can get extra energy from Hope over and over again. Kitty is the ultimate enabler. Please note there are other high series cards here. Hope Summers, Silk, and Jeff are the other keys in most Kitty decks. Um, although Elsa is also really, 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 really great with her. Null is a requirement for destroy. We're at like the must have cards now, right? Null is a 6 0 ongoing, has the combined power of all cards destroyed this game. This is um, like in every destroy deck for all time, and the best Mr. Negative decks usually run this. This is the single most high series card for destroy, and you can get to a really competent destroy deck with just Null and X23 as your high series cards, although you'll want Nico at some point too. So this is um, Ika's destroy. We covered this way earlier uh, last week it's an absolutely stellar list it basically says i can just play a bunch of ones which make my mockingbird cheap and then destroy them uh we'll look at the like standard destroy list later there's a lot of destroy cards up here so we'll look at the more standard destroy list as we go forward but this one is so cool i felt like i had to feature it and like please note mockingbird null x23 is nico needed still no in this version uh nico's great in destroy but not a requirement in destroy x23 is 
And for this particular version, this is built for a Mockingbird. That's a cheap nine. It's just really strong. All right, uh, Lady Deathstrike is a 5-4. Destroy each card here with less power than this isn't on reveal. She's got no real home. She's one of the least uh, played cards of the game. She occasionally exists as a meta answer in decks, but it's really, really rare. Like, when Coulson is everywhere and you really, really need to get death off, she can have a home. Outside of that, she's kind of a bad card. Um, told you I'd have a more standard destroy. This is our more standard destroy with Lady Deathstrike. Outside of Lady Deathstrike and, I guess, Forge, who's in and out now, that could be um, lots of other cards, I guess. That could be Hulkbuster, for example. Then Lady Deathstrike is fine here, right? Like, there's a bunch of cards that go here. Um, that could be a Shang. That could be um, Yondu. That could be whatever, right? Like, there's 15 cards that go in that last spot for the deck. This is the last cut spot and the most cuttable. However, it's worth noting that this card deck does have a really good win rate, despite because of despite because of the Lady of Deathstrike. I don't think she's very good. I used to try and make her work a lot, and it was never really worthwhile. Next up, we have Legion. I am personally a very big fan of this card. It's one of my favorite cards in the game, but it's a good stuff, good cards card. It steals cube, but is in no way a requirement even when it's good. It's always replaceable, even when it's the best thing to do in slot. It's very good, but replaceable. Um... After stuff required for specific decks, you go get, like, whatever decks you want to play, you go get this, and then this just slots into things and gives you extra tools, and it helps you steal cubes. It can work with basically anything, so it's there's no required cards with it, really, but this is where we've seen it most. This is Lambie's version of Revis's Error Control, both phenomenal players and really nice people. Um, Legion is a scam card here, right? Like you're trying to do Sarah's Abu, a bunch of two, a bunch of fours that become twos at the end of the game to steal the game. And sometimes you just throw a Legion down and it steals you cubes. That's all it is. It's a really, really good scam card. But like, if you change this for, I don't know, Cannonball or Vision or Error or whatever, is your deck like that much worse? Mm, it's somewhere in there, right? All right, next up we have Modok. Um, number one Apocalypse discard required high series card. And Apocalypse discard is one of the... At worst, three to four best decks in Marvel Snap right now, so you need Modok. Cool? Um, this used to be a cheap deck, but Meek, Proxima, and Corvus exist now, so it is no longer nearly as cheap with two Series 5 cards in basically every version, one extra Series 4 that's in some. Um, this is reasonably important for some variations of Hela, and an occasional good stuff build that's just trying to like get free stuff by discarding. This is where you start for one of the best decks of the game, which means that Modok is a must-have card for the first time ever. This is our friend King Venom's discard Dracula. King Venom's a really cool streamer. Um, like, this is the standard-ass discard Dracula. This is about as basic as it comes. You'll note that we have Proxim and Corvus here, but nothing else high series is really required. So if you can manage to target and get these cards, then you have a full deck. Um, can you play this without Corvus and Proxima? Yeah, probably. Um without losing too too much at that point you may want to cut helicarrier it gets a little i don't know a little iffy but either way this is a cool powerful deck and modok is a thousand percent the required card man thing is not a required card it's good for junk but the junk decks don't always play it four or five um ongoing one two and three cost cards here have negative two power we're getting a two two with the reverse three four and five cost cards have negative three power i think whatever um, this was in a good stuff build right after it came out. It won a tournament in a Darkhawk deck, but that kind of deck doesn't exist anymore. So please don't go out of your way to get it. This is a fun card, but not good. Um, it's almost always in decks with Annihilus and Annihilus and more and more going in decks with Mockingbird. So like this is getting fairly expensive for what something that used to be really cheap. Also, I would fully expect this to go down to series three relatively soon. It's just not important enough. And they seem to be putting the non-important things into series three. Martyr is better than people think. It's an occasional zoo card. It's an occasional Cerebro 5 card. It's really good with uh, Black Swan. She likes Cull, too, because you can play Cull on top of her. The Ms. Marvel buff, sorry, excuse me, the Captain Marvel buff of the recent OTA is a buff for Martyr, because if you play Martyr first, then Captain Marvel, if Martyr moves to try and lose you the game, Captain uh, Marvel will fly over to counterbalance that, and then you go back to winning the game, which is nice. If you fill every location, she has no downside. Um, she's not a priority, but she's not bad to have. And my favorite deck for her is our friend Phil Woodward's Zoo deck. I love this deck. Strong Guy is probably better as Gladiator, but this is relatively cheap. This is a hit monkey list. You basically say, um, I play Bishop, 
I play Kazar, I play Black Swan, I play all my ones for free, and Hit Monkey becomes huge. It's a cool list, and again, um, you really, really, really want Martyr for this list because a 1 5 when you're filling every location is amazing. Next up is Meek. She, the, Meek is really good, but Discard has so many good cards, he's not a requirement. Thought he was going to be after his change, because now he's a when you discard a card, this gains plus one power and can move next turn. So he gets nice and big. He's like a 1-6 that can move on your command, right? That should be really, really good in a requirement, but Discard is so good right now and has so many good cards. He's not. This is less important than Modok in the Series 5 cards, Proxman Corvus. The on-demand move makes him better. Um, but he, And now he's actually really good with Proxima because he helps you figure out where you want your Proxima to go. All right, um, this is a version of it. This is a standard discard list. He's better, generally speaking, in the lists that don't bother to run um, Helicarrier because you just start to run tight on space. And um, like if you're not running Helicarrier, you're not running Collector, and now he's your second scaling early play card, which is really powerful, and thus he's really good in the deck. That's it. This is, again, Modok, Proxima, Corvus. You see it. Those are the three required cards. This is just an extra thing you can do. Mirage um, is a 2-2. Copy the lowest cost card in your opponent's hand to give it plus, and give it plus 2 power. It, you'd think that'd be great, but it's not. It's just fine. It's a Loki card. It only ever goes in Loki, and even there, it's like the most replaceable card to ever be replaceable. Um, Cable is better right now as a 2-3 that steals a card from your opponent's deck, and Sentinel is not significantly worse even when Mirage is good. This is the least important high series card in Loki, but it is often in Loki decks, as you can see right here, um, which means it goes with Snowguard, it goes with Mockingbird, it goes with Hope. It sometimes goes with Elsa or Werewolf or whatever, depending on what type of what flavor of Loki, sometimes Ms. Marvel. In whatever version of uh, Loki you're running, it's a card you can run, but not a card you must run. Next up, we have Mobius. This is one of the most important tech cards in the game and goes into nearly everything. This completely shuts down a million cards. Mockingbird, She-Hulk, Sarah, Zabu, Scar, Mr. Negative, Ravona. Um, Pixie, it both enables and stops. This is one of the most must-have cards in the game. And since it's a text card, a tech card, excuse me, I think this is going to series drop two. I could be wrong, but they've never kept, a, I don't think they're going to keep tech cards high series. I think this is going to be a card you're going to be able to get. And this is definitely a card you want. One of the most like, you should get this cards in all of Marvel Snap is Mobius and Mobius. All right, this is um, Owie's Thanos Bird deck. Mobius goes in everything, including modern Thanos decks to stop the Loki bad matchup, to stop opposing Mockingbird. This is the list um, currently that Owie hit top one in the world with. It's got Claw in it, which I think is just hilarious, but it's got Mobius. The deck is freaking ridiculously expensive. But again, Mobius goes in nearly everything. You saw him in that Sarah list earlier, which is nowhere near this expensive. You want Mobius. I want Mobius. Mobius is a requirement. Next up, we have Nimrod. Um, Nimrod has a good home in some Phoenix Force and some specific Destroy. Um, are these the best versions of Phoenix Force or Destroy? That's obviously wildly debatable. But, um, sorry, excuse me. 5-6, when this is destroyed, add a copy to each other location. I like this card a lot i think this card is really really fun but i don't know if you super need him um there's as good phoenix source versions and better destroy versions that don't run him he's good with null and Eliath decks or phoenix as higher series cards but again you're not really going to need him like he's a card if you're learning phoenix force he's worth grabbing but outside of that i'd probably skip him this is a example of different Phoenix Force build that he goes in. This one runs Eliath as a top end. Sometimes these run Loki as a top end. There's a bajillion versions of this. But if you're going Shuri Nimrod, you basically want to set, you want to keep the Deathlock in your Phoenix Force because you want that extra destroy trigger so that if you destroyed something and didn't get your Phoenix Force off, you can still make the extra Nimrod copies. Speaking of, Phoenix Force is an archetype, archetype in and of itself. Um, Phoenix Force is an excellent card. Genuinely, this is borderline tier one. It would be like tier one for everyone if it were easier to play. It is not easy to play. It's one of the hardest things. This is a master's list. This uses Nimrod, Loki, or Eliath, or more combos, but you must have Ghost Spider. Phoenix Force is a card that to get if you have Ghost Spider, if you don't have it, it's really, really hard to play. Here is yet another Phoenix Force version. This one is our friend Shuri Enjoyer's version that he was using around the top 20 of Infinite Ladder. It says... 
I wanted to show you a version without Nimrod, right? So this one says, I can go Shuri, Red Skull, Taskmaster. I can go, um, if I Phoenix, uh, Human Torch, I can make it really big and never play another card and then drop Taskmaster. Sauron's nice for the Red Skull shenanigans. Sauron gives you a free Ebony Maul, which is pretty nice. I think this is a cool deck. Um, is this as good as the others? I don't really think so, but it is a very good version of Phoenix Force, and it's really fun. All right, we have Ravona. She's required for occasional combo decks or Mr. Negative. That's really where she's used. Um, I loved her in Darkhawk shells, but they moved Darkhawk away from her. She's a 2-3 ongoing. Your cards with one or less power cost one less with a minimum of one. She works unbelievably well with Iron Man, so Tribunal or Null um, decks are great here. Um, she can go with Zabu for redundancy if you can get your four-cost cards that have negative one, uh, one or less power. For example... Dracula, for example, um, Jubilee can go down to two cost for, or you can just make sure they cost three by having both. Zola is a key series three friend, and she has some good homes for Annihilus and Goblins as well. As we can see right here, this is a version where she's basically discounting both Goblins and Professor X. And that's it, right? Like, she's just a very good, strong card. This is Miley's deck used specifically from rank 200 to rank 5, and it is very good into Thanos. It's a really good deck, and um, yeah, it doesn't work without Ravona. Miley tried it without Ravona, suggested without Ravona. People aren't winning with it without Ravona, so don't do that. Next up, we have Silver Samurai. Strong for discard versus cards like Blob or Iron Man. Not really played besides that. Um, he's got an occasional discard home, but he's the least important card in every discard, even below Doc and Ramique. Uh, worth noting, sorry, 4-5, each player discards the lowest power card from their hand, which lets him counter Blob again, which is huge. That's his real use, right? Like, you're running him to counter Blob or to trigger your stature. Outside of those two, meh. Okay, this is our friend ZT4. ZT4 is one of the best discard players in the world, wins tournaments with this card, even when discard's not meta, and loves Silver Samurai on the list because, well, Silver Samurai can help you win a game that you wouldn't otherwise win because the opponent has an Iron Man. The opponent has a blob that takes up too much power. So this is um, meant to hit Swarm, which can be difficult, right? And you don't play it with Dracula in hand and so on. But outside of those situations, it is very, very powerful in this list. You just have to play it well. Um, this deck almost made the cut in the World Championships. It was 4-2 and two and missed out on strength of schedule. So that's worth knowing, too, that this is a deck that can be played at a high level in basically any meta, and Silver Samurai can go in it. You know what's missing here, though? Colleen Wing, a Series 3 card. So you can just put Colleen in and be totally fine. Snowguard is only ever seen in Loki. It used to be in Surfer for a little bit, but they killed Werewolf and then killed this. Um, this is replaceable, but everything is worse than it because it's the only one drop that gives you two cards, and that freaking Snowbird is unbelievable. It adds a, um, a Hawk and Bear aura to your hand as a 1-2. They both cost 3. The Bear is 3-4. It makes a on-reveal location trigger. Much better is the hawk, which turns off all locations for a turn, so it can like cancel out a limbo or that for uh, the TVA or whatever, or just a location you can't play into. Phenomenal, phenomenal card works for both, but again, snow guard is stellar and necessary. This is safety's birdie wordy deck, which is um, running snow guard because every Loki deck runs snow guard. Snow guard's also pretty nice with mockingbird because it gives you extra cards to make mockingbird cheaper. It's nice with collector in some decks because it gives collector extra bonuses. Snow guard, like literally the most important card that's not Loki, that's high series that's not Loki in this deck is snow guard. Cool. Next up, we have Spider Ham, who's a good card but not a requirement. He's also totally out of the meta. He's good cheap filler, um, but he's really dangerous for Mobius and Infinite. And with War Machine coming out tomorrow, then. Mobius and Infinite are just going to see more play, so Spider-Ham is gone. He's out right now. By the way, he's sorry. 1-1. One, one. I need to start doing that first. Transform the leftmost card in your opponent's hand to a pig, keeping its power and cost. When you pig and then they have you have Mobius, um, they have Mobius, that pig costs zero. So, yeah. If they have Mobius after you've pigged them, that pig is free. Infinite can be played without any restriction. So these things are dangerous, so I don't think Spider-Ham is good right now. But again, he's really solid in bounce. Uh, KX4N, who's a tournament player, KM and Lambie's moderator, genuinely really good person, played this version of um, Annihilus Bounce in the first week of the Snap Judgments League, our ongoing tournament series. So, yeah, 
Spider Ham is just a nice bounce card here that can move around your werewolf. That's all he is. He is basically 100% replaceable with Iceman. Cool. Zabu is important and versatile and goes in everything. 2-2, two, two, ongoing your four cross cards, costs one less, minimum one. Um, he's one of the most important early cards in the game, though moving Darkhawk away from him hurt him and Thanos being everywhere hurt him. War Machine re uh, releasing will make him better. He goes in Loki, ongoing combo, bounce, good stuff, negative. He goes in freaking everything. He is the, in my personal opinion, single most must-have series four card. Um, this is a good cards Black Knight list. People don't play this a lot, but it's still one of the best decks in Marvel Snap. It's still super consistent. It was the King of Swiss in the World Championships. It's great, and it requires Zabu. Zabu works great with the Shard. It works great with... Um, Cards like Shang-Chi or Ms. Marvel and Ghost Rider. What it really does is it allows you to play two fours. On, it allows you to play a four on turn three, which is ahead of curve, and two fours on turn six, which isn't supposed to happen. Black Knight is great. Also, this deck wants War Machine. I need to figure out what it wants a cut to do so. Cool. All right. So the series four target list. The best cards are Zabu is the absolute number one most must have series four card. Um. It goes in everything. So does Mobius, but Zabu enables your deck while Mobius counters your opponent's deck, and I think enabling is more important. Null is Null is probably the most powerful card. It's Null or Modok that are the most powerful card for the most powerful deck that is required in Series 4. I might move Modok above right now. It's very, very close between those two. Uh, Null also has the negative decks, whereas I guess Modok also has the Hella decks. I don't know. They both need other series, high series cards. I guess Null needs fewer series cards because it only needs X23, whereas Modok wants uh, two other in Corvus and Proxima, so it's close. Kitty is a phenomenal, phenomenal enabler. Um, if you bought Hope Summers, get Kitty Pride. And Phoenix Force is the last of the best. I struggled with where to put this, but I think it has to be up here largely because it's its own archetype and that archetype is so powerful again skill cap issues next up are needed pieces ghost spider is needed if you ever want to play move hit monkey is needed if you ever want to play bounce ravona for negative decks and snow guard for loki these are not the most powerful cards individually although hit monkey sort of it toes the line these are decks that enable you to play other decks and thus are required for specific decks Darkhawk, Meek, and Nimrod are all in specific decks, but I have no idea if they're required for those decks or how good those decks are or anything else. I like them, but they're a line below. Other fine or good cards. Um, so I would get at least a couple of these above Darkhawk, Meek, or Nimrod. I think I would get Legion and Dokken above Darkhawk and Meek, but it's close. Um, Legion is the best card here by a lot. It's the best, like, good card stuff. The rest I would qualify as fine. So Dokken, Spider-Ham, Martyr, Echo, and Silver Samurai are fine cards and bad cards. I'd actually move Havoc up to probably ahead of Spider-Ham right now, based on the bounce list from Friday's video, just so you know. But Mirage is just not needed. It's a fine card, but, like, again, cheap cards do the same thing. Means don't spend your tokens, don't spend your caches. Uh, Man-Thing is kind of a junk card. Again, you can play literally toxic stuff without ever needing Man Thing. Lady Death Strike is whatever, and Howard is whatever. Each, remember, each is in order within its tier. Cool. And Havoc has again moved up to other fine good cards, or maybe even four specific decks. On to Series 5. Our first Series 5 card is Eliath. 6 2. On reveal, destroy all unrevealed enemy cards here. You know Eliath, you've lost to Eliath. Hopefully, you're not losing too many cubes to Eliath. Um, and this is going to be in every lockdown deck forever and ever and ever. It is the ultimate lockdown card. It's often in Thanos, Junk, Galactus. And, and then sometimes people just run in random stuff because it can be oppressive. This is one of the best six cost cards in the game, bar none. Like, without any question, this is one of the very best six cost cards in the game. Top three, top five, depends on how you uh, classify Thanos. This is not a deck to itself, and it's rarely played without other high series stuff, though. For example, this is a nice Mocking in the USA. Well, this is a Mockingbird list that runs Iron Lad, Mockingbird, and Alive. And this is about as cheap as you get for this card. It's going to go in decks that run High Evolutionary. It's going to go in decks that run Thanos. And so they're all going to be expensive, but it is an amazing finisher if you can get a bunch of power and priority early. Otherwise, it's a dead card. And, you know, uh, Patriot is amazing at getting priority. So life is great in it. Next up, we have Annihilus. 
Uh, this is one of the best three. Sorry, five six. On reveal, your cards with power below zero switch sides. Destroy those that can't. So this is one of the best five cost cards in the game. If Mockingbird wasn't a five cost card, I think it was the best five cost card in the game. It's got an amazing three card package with Sentry and Hood. Um, it's absolutely required for Junk Galactus, and it's also in Bounce and Good Stuff. This is just a great, 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 great card. Like Annihilus is again, like an absolute target. The power level of fives is far above the power level of fours. Um, outside of Zabu Mobius, I think that like the first two cards we've looked at are just way above the series four cards. So here we have a nice bounce deck that's running Annihilus. This is fairly similar to the KX4 end deck from earlier, so I'm not going to belabor the point. Um, everything wants Hope Summers. Go get Hope frickin' Summers. I don't know if Hope Summers counts as a Series 5 card. I can't remember if I put her on this. But yo, buy Hope before next week. You will be sad if you don't. It's the most important card in the game right now, I think. Outside of, like, Thanos. It goes in everything. Um... Annihilus works really well with Werewolf. Werewolf will jump over to it, and you can then play the one drops to play, uh, put Werewolf where you want it. It's just really strong, really strong card, if expensive. Next up, we have Beta Ray Bill. On reveal, shuffle Stormbreaker into your deck. Stormbreaker is an 0-1 that doubles Beta Ray's power, which again means doing it multiple times doubles over and over. This is another three-card package with Thor and Shame Foster, but it's a little less consistent because you must Jane by turn five. You can play Annihilus on turn six and still get the benefit. If you Jane on turn six, you've done nothing. This can go with Bounce, uh, Annihilus, Darkhawk, Lockjaw, Hit monkey or werewolf, so it's really versatile, but it doesn't quite go tall enough for the Thanos meta. This could be a contender if Thanos leaves. It is really, again, hard to tell what's really good when Thanos is gone, but it is a very good card. Here's Owie's Thor control card. Owie is a French streamer, absolutely phenomenal player who's hit number one on the leaderboard. This is a nice Thor's deck that can, it basically runs the Ceres shell, except it says, hey, but what about Thor's? Really, really strong deck. Next up is Black Knight. This is one of the biggest power output cards of the game, but it is fragile as a 1-1. One, one. This has been number one on the infinite leaderboard before. Sorry, 1-2 after you discard a card, add an enemy blade to your hand with that card's power. So if you discard an infinite, you have a 420. That cannot be destroyed and cannot have its power reduced. Um, this goes in a ton of shells. Basically, Annihilus, Sarah Control, and Hela are the three main ones, but you can find others. For Hela and Sarah, he can be the only high series card in the deck, which is really, really good. He does need Zabu, though, or really want Zabu. For example, this version does not need Scar. Scar is nice here, but we don't need Scar. We saw a different Black Knight deck earlier without Scar, so I'm just trying to show you slightly different versions of it. This is, again, our friend King Venom, who is nice and back for this. Oh, this one also runs Jeff. Again, Jeff, not a requirement. Throw a freaking lizard in there. You'll be okay. Um, you do want Zabu almost always for Black Knight. So Black Knight, Zabu, you have access to a high to a high power deck that can get you infinite that can get you into high infinite cool this is one of the cheapest ways to go for a really powerful deck black swan is currently one of the worst season pass cards ever three five uh on reveal until the end of next turn your one cost cards cost zero unless the uh rocket and captain marvel changes makes three row five meta she's super mid um, she's in the occasional Zoo or Dracula dump deck and goes well with hit monkey or werewolf because hit monkey wants a lot of free cards and werewolf wants to bounce around uh, but she's not in basically any of the good bounce decks anymore. She's not a good bounce card. She requires you to do too many combos to get bounce really going. This is a Dracula dump deck. You basically play Black Swan, and then you play all your one drops, and you leave your hand with one card in it, and then Dracula discards that. Strong Guy becomes a 3-9. Dracula becomes a 3-16 or 3-20. Ideally, you can figure out how to discard Proxima. Um, and then you're good to go. You should win the game because you put a ton of power out. This deck has a way better win rate than people expect. It's a very cool deck from our friend Safety. You should check it out. It's good, um, but it, need, it does need Black Swan, but you don't really want Black Swan. If you bought the Season Pass, have fun. Blob is a 6-0. He's only in Thanos decks outside of Gunny's Big Dumb Idiots deck um, that we looked at during the Echo section. She does go in every Thanos build. He is literally just a Thanos card. He is 6-0 merge cards with, uh, from your deck until this is 15 or more power, but the ongoing can't be moved. This is really often just stupid. 
um, power because it can get to like 27 power, 32 power if the right things are in your deck, if you build and get lucky, which means he's really hard to play around. He's the single biggest I played one card without any other real setup if he's in the right deck and got a bajillion power card in Marvel Snap. This is um, King Venom's Thanos tier S. There's a bajillion versions of this. This is, um, oh, this is um, Lambie's version because Lambie's the one who cut uh, Magneto, I believe. Oh, no, no, no. Lambie also cut Professor X. Whatever. These are all within like three cards of each other, all the different Thanos lists right now. This is King Venom's version. Um, every single version runs Blob. Cool. You need Blob for them. These decks are all stupid expensive, though. So if you're going to play Thanos, you need to be prepared to spend or have a lot of the cards already. Next up, we have Kyra, who is amazing in Thanos and could be again with various changes to the deck. We shall see how Kyra shakes out as the meta develops. 3-4 ongoing. Your 1 and 6 cost cards can't be destroyed. Um, Thanos has too much good stuff right now, so it's going so big in so many lanes. And it's got Mockingbird as well. And uh, Call, who Kyra doesn't protect, so you just sort of cut her at this point. She's in the occasional Evo deck, but is mostly missing. This is a nice Sheena deck from Peralta, a Brazilian streamer. Um, yeah, it's a cool deck, right? Like, protect your She-Hulk, Hulk, and Infinite. Protect your Sunspot and Misty. Use Kyra. Hope is here for Wasp, so you can do the... Um, basically, you want to go Hope into... You can go hope into Wasp and into playing like an early She-Hulk, or, um, excuse me, sorry, I need to adjust myself. You can go hope into, like, I don't care, whatever, four drop, right? Skip five and then go She-Hulk and Hulk, or She-Hulk and Infinite on turn six. Your Sunspot gets big, your Cyclops takes some power off, and you're just a happy camper. Real powerful deck, real cool deck. Um, is Kyra required? Nah, that's the problem with it, right? Care is just not a requirement for this deck. It is very good here, though. Cannonball, the newest card. Hey, I do last chance review every Monday. This is Monday. This is your last chance review. Cannonball is a 5-8 on reveal. Move the highest power enemy card here away. If you can't, destroy it with a rock. This card ain't needed at all. It's a really good card. I think it's, like, way underrated. It's a nice, good stuff card. This is, like, worse Legion in my head. Um... It's about the same tier as Valkyrie, both of which are cards that are easy to accomplish, so you can get them. It is early to tell. I think this will eventually find its meta home after Thanos is everywhere, but that's a feeling that I can't back up right now. Um, I'd skip him. I don't think he's worth getting, but I won't be shocked if eventually he becomes meta. Hopefully he'll be in spotlight caches around them, but right now he's just too fragile to really recommend. I would not be shocked if he changed to every time he moves something, he leaves a rock instead of only uh, when he destroys it. This is Googly's deck. Googly is Desert Fox, one of the best uh, Marvel Snap players and streamers. He's an Italian player. This is the deck I've been playing Cannonball in, and I've had a lot of success with it. Basically, you use Rocks and Professor X to lock something down, and Cannonball either wins you the lane or destroys the opponent's highest power card to win you the game. Yeah, really good, really strong. I think this is one of Cannonball's very best homes. Corvus is the discard king. He goes into both Hela and Apocalypse. He's the tie between them. 3-5 on reveal, discard two cards to get plus one max energy. Uh, plus one energy is great, right, Hope Summers? This doesn't usually mix well with Black Knight, but occasionally will go in a deck with both. And it can make Hela Thanos list, although with Hope there's less point. I would not be shocked if Hela Thanos became a thing again, given the Mind Stone nerf and release of, um, release of War Machine. We'll see. This is Lupo Chase Snappa's discard tier zero. This is um, another Italian player who sits at the top of the infinite leaderboard. They're pretty good at snap the top of the top Italian players. Um, this deck must have Corvus. It doesn't exist without Corvus. But it's worth noting, Proxima, Moda, Corvus, right? If you have those three, you have access to an absolute ton of meta decks. Go get them. Gull Obsidian is a 410. He's a boring card. You can only play this where you have a one cost card. He goes in Thanos and Zoo and fits well into Bounce. He may fit Loki, but is not a requirement. And he usually goes with several other high series cards. So he's not a good early grab, but if you're trying to finish out a deck um, that's Thanos Zoo, he is a ton of power. 410 is just a lot, right? He's got no real downside most of the time. Big Baby hit rank one with this Zoo deck. Um, I like this deck a lot. It needs color. It doesn't exist. Basically, Colin Mockingbird are your power for this deck. And Eliath says, since I'm playing these powerful cards, I should be ahead and win. Again, we're at um, 
four series five cards call is a expensive card for decks but is very powerful in those decks Elsa's a former season pass card. 3-3, three, three, each card you play to fill each side of your equation gets a plus 2 power. If you can fill your whole board and get Elsa down before you do, um, she ends up being 3-9, which is fantastic. We've seen how powerful Gladiator is at 3-8. If you've got any bounce or other shenanigans, she ends up even bigger, 3-11, 3-13. That's great. Silky and bounce decks are her main home. Sometimes she goes in like a surfer deck or whatever other weird stuff. She can go in Shuri Kitty. She can go in Loki. Um... She could even go in Thanos, but those aren't the builds that are being played right now. She's still super strong. Just really powerful card. I like her a lot. I think she's great, but I also love Bounce, so grains of salt. Cool. Um, X-Men Bounce is this list. This is a den list that he's constantly trying to get me to play because it's got Valkyrie in it, and I love Valkyrie. This is awesome. This is a stellar list. This is very good. Um, Elsa says Kitty is amazing, right? Elsa, Hope, and Kitty are just a sick package in terms of putting a lot of power. Um, they're going to grow a collector in the process. It's cool. It's a very good deck. Next up, we have Galactus. Galactus is our first big bad that we're going to talk about. 6-5, uh, unreal. If you're winning this location, and this is your only card here, destroy all the locations. He's a backup in other packages at this point, and second dinner is never going to let him become meta again because the sheer amount of shit they went through and complaining they went through when he was ain't happening. He's fun but niche, and he always happens with Eliath and usually with Hope and Hylas. So don't get him before those other cards, which are more versatile. But he is worth getting, I think. Uh, this is Lufgu's Week 1 deck for the Snap Judgments League. This is a good standard Galactus list. You don't usually win with Galactus here, right? You're not really trying to win with Galactus. You're trying to win with your Annihilus and Eliath. And sometimes you get a free win because they didn't protect against your Goblins and Hobgoblin, and Galactus just auto wins. Cool. Oh, Nebula is really good with Galactus too. I didn't say that earlier. Selene's will get to her. But like Nebula is really, really good with Galactus too because Nebula incentivizes your opponents to play in one spot, which often leaves you open for Galactus. Gladiator is 3-8. Uh, on reveal, add a card from your opponent's deck to you their side of the location if it has less power to destroy it. This is a pure good stuff with good stats card. This was everywhere since he's three for eight, which is way ahead. Three energy, excuse me. Which is way, way, way ahead of the next most powerful three. But Thanos being everywhere means that he either hits a stone and draws them cards or hits one of their big things, and that's really dangerous. He's great with either Sarah or Surfer or even just his turn three tempo in general good decks. Big Baby in the Dr. Stink Fartson deck. Uh, I didn't name it. I don't know what to tell you. Basically said, I can put the Gladiator stuff into the Move Stuff shell, and they should be peanut butter and chocolate. So Gladiator's good. He's just a good tempo. I play big stats card. Look, this deck, this card is powerful. Grandmaster. I love Grandmaster. One of my favorite cards. 2-0. Uh, move one of your other unreveal cards here to the middle location. Its ability happens again. This has no home currently. It's, I mean, except Cerebro 3. We're going to look at that Cerebro 3, which can run Valkyrie and Shang-Chi, and if you don't have prior in the game, you can play Grandmaster on Valkyrie, Shang-Chi, and win. If Jeff and, Revo uh, Jeff and Ravona and Bast are all in that deck, Surfer and Darkhawk can use him. It's really, really, really hard for Surfer to not have a uh, extra ongoing in that lane, which is dangerous. Darkhawk likes to give an extra... Um, Card of the name is escaping me. An extra Rock Slide or an extra Black Widow on the opponent. So it could go in those decks. Um, I really loved him in a Darkhawk shell, but Darkhawk's not a 4-0, which means it no longer works for Ravona, which means the deck sort of fell apart. He'll eventually rule, but his time isn't now. This is our friend Royce's uh, Cerebro 3 deck. Royce rolls like Royce over on Twitter. Built this Cerebro 3 deck. I've got a really great record with it. I think it's very, very strong. Um, I think Leech is completely freaking hilarious in it. Leech was better in it before, to be perfectly honest. But at least now you can Leech on turn 6 with magic and occasionally steal games and cubes. This is a very, very good deck and a very good list That's that Grandmaster is all but a complete requirement for. I think you might be able to pull this list off without Ravona and Jeff, but uh, you actually need Grandmaster more than anything else. Who'd have thunk it? Hercules, 4-7. The first time another card here, another card moves here each turn, move it to another location. 4-7 is good stats. It's basically just this and Proxima with those stats. Um, I don't know. This certainly is good in exactly like two or three move decks. You don't need it for move decks, 
the, the very best ones tend to run him because he's a power amplifier. Move is, again, super duper hard to play, as we said earlier. The only other really high required high series car is Ghost Spider, although he occasionally likes a Phoenix Force. Safety Blade, in particular, loved playing him with Phoenix Force. Ragged made top four in the World Championships with this exact deck, running, you guessed it, Hercules. Hercules is Hercules and Ghost Spider, excuse me, are the only high series cards here since Negasonic and 2099 became Series 3. So as you can see, um, he is very powerful, at least potentially in a move list. Evolutionary is our second big bad, 4-4. At the start of the game, unlock the potential of your cards with no abilities. They are Wasp, who gives negative one to an opponent. Uh, Shocker, which makes the... Oh, sorry, Misty, which when you have an extra energy, gives an extra random one power to a, one of your friendly cards. Shocker, which uh, makes the leftmost card in your hand cost one cheaper. Uh, three cost card is Cyclops, uh, who gives, when you have extra energy, gives negative one to two different cards at an opponent's location. Thing, which gives on reveal, gives negative three to three cards at the opponent's location. Abomination, which gets cheaper for each card your opponent has played with negative energy. And Hulk, which gets plus one power when in hand or in play. Pl sorry, plus two power when in hand or in play when your opponent has, um, Sorry, when you have any extra energy at the end of the turn. He's a deck unto himself, and thus the first Series 5 card you should probably get. That deck can use some Series 4 cards, particularly Evolutionary Loves Hope, but this barely needs anything else, especially it doesn't really even need Series 3 cards. Here's a nice simple version uh, where every card but High Evolutionary is Series 3 or lower. So that's why I think High Evolutionary is a really good grab. Again, King Venom deck, nice and simple. Um, this deck only works with High Evo, right? It's running Misty. And Cyclops and Hulk and Abomination. Without Haivo, this deck does nothing. With it, it's a deck. Next up, Iron Lad. Iron Lad is 4 6. On reveal, copy the text of your deck's top card. Um, Iron Lad is one of the best, just put it in a deck and you'll be fine cards of the game. It goes with basically everything but Goblins, She Hulk, and Mockingbird. So, like, feel free to just run this. It's one of the best cards. It's in everything. It's so, so good. This is. Dark Bolt, it is a nice, simple uh, Darkhawk Black Bolt list that runs Iron Lad. It's not an expensive list. The only other really high... Is, uh, it's got Darkhawk and Zabu in it, and doesn't need Jeff. But Iron Lad is great here, right? Iron Lad, it's a Darkhawk, you're happy. Iron Lad, it's a Black Bolt, a Doctor Doom. Like anything, you're happy. It's really good. Props to Set Camper for a very cool list. Ms. Marvel. Oh, Ms. Marvel Series 5. Poopy. All right. Jean Grey is an occasional locked on or surfer card. Sorry, ongoing players must play each of their cards here each turn. This card sucks. Um, she can be good with Nebula or Alioth, but she's probably mostly not good. Um, I don't know. Don't get her. Here's uh, the counter guys, Jean Grey deck. I like this deck a lot, but like, I don't know. Like Thanos just plays a couple stones and doesn't care about her, right? Bounce just plays in and out, in and out of her at will. There will be a meta eventually where she's good, but with War Machine coming about tomorrow, that meta ain't today. Jeff is everything. He is 2-3. You can move this once. Nothing can stop you from moving or playing this to any location. He makes Iron Lad look restrictive, like a card that can't be played everywhere, because he goes everywhere and is one of the best cards. He fits in every deck. You don't need him for almost any deck unless you are specifically running Professor X. This deck isn't. It's just really good. This is Ava's Cannonball Thanos list, which is just like, why the hell not? No one expects Cannonball. I'm going to seal cubes with it. I like this list a lot. I think it's really cool, and... uh Ignore that side like as a 2-2, because I definitely didn't make this slideshow before the OTA. I would never. Kang is the worst card in Marvel Snap. He's a big bad 5-0. Look at the, what the opponent did, then restart the turn without Kang. Basically, he's like, unless you drew him the turn you played him, he's negative one draw, and then your opponent can change what they're doing. It's a mind game card, and it's not a good one. He's fine with Annihilus and Eliath if you must play him, but he's bad. This is Bohe's Kang deck. Bohe is the only person to ever even make Kang slightly work. This is the deck. Don't play it. Don't play Kang. Tribunal. 6-9. Split your total power evenly among all locations. Is amazing. We saw him in a Phoenix Force deck earlier. He also goes with uh, ongoing combo and ongoing negative decks amazingly. He's been great in Thanos in the past, so anything that goes really huge can use him. This is the list. Sorry, I was making sure since I had a random four that I didn't screw up my slideshow. If I did, I'm not restarting. Just for the record, if there's ever a mess up on the slideshow, we are married to this uh, recording at this point. So 
So this is a living tribunal deck. This is based on the Hell Enjoyer style of tribunal. Uh, safety also has similar styles to tribunal. I don't want to forget safety. But this is a very good deck that basically must have tribunal. It's entirely a tribunal deck. These ongoing decks are always entirely tribunal decks. Play them with tribunal. Because if you get Iron Man Onslaught Tribunal, you have a bajillion power all over the place. Loki is one of the best cards in the game. He's a deck unto himself. 4 or 5, transform your hand into cards from a home certain deck with negative 1 cost. You basically fill your hand with stuff, then Loki is incredibly strong. He goes with a ton of high series cards, or very few. He loves Mockingbird and Snowguard right now. Those are his high series friends. Zabu is often in Loki decks, but getting cut more and more because of Elsa. Sorry, because of Hope. Kitty, Iron Lad, Call, Elsa, and Hope all fit. He's a deck, but he also can go just go in Thanos and Elsa decks as well. Here we go. This is Ava Zord's version. Ava builds on my favorite Loki decks. This is one of my favorite Loki decks. What a surprise. Um, you'll see the Hope and Kitty combo. Snowguard, again, goes in all of these. Jeff can go in everything, and Loki is stellar. Mockingbird goes in all these now, too. Loki is starting to get expensive, but I'm going to be completely honest. If you have Snowguard and Loki, you can build a Loki deck. That's all you need as far as high series stuff. You can build a Loki deck. Loki is a great early card to get. All right, Mockingbird, 5-9, one of the best cards in Marvel Snap. I think she's at least top five, probably more like top three. 5-9 can cost less, sorry, cost less for, uh, one less for each of your cards in play that didn't start in your deck. So everything enables her Patriot decks. So Iron Lad, Loki, and Thanos are obvious. Zoo, like I told you to get Mockingbird a couple weeks ago. If you watch all my videos, you should have got Mockingbird because Mockingbird is stupid good. This is Thanos Mockingbird. Cool. We all see it. We've seen this list. You've seen this list if you play Marvel Snap at all. Note the bajillion high series card. She doesn't always need a bajillion, but she usually wants a few. Mockingbird is stupidly good. Ms. Marvel is also very good. If Thanos ever chills out, she's a meta card, but like she's just not good enough into Thanos because Thanos goes too tall. 4-4 uh, four, four ongoing. Your adjacent location with two cards with no repeat cost have plus five power. 4-4-14 four, four, is a lot and worth the work she requires in both deck building and play. She's in a ton of decks and is usually played with Zebu. She works great with other cards like Gladiator and Black Knight. She fits in sort of everything except Thanos, because Thanos has the stones, and obviously you can't really make her work with those. So once Thanos is gone, I think she's going to be really good again. But for the time being, she's not amazing. She is even in some Loki decks when you're running Zebu, because Loki would then cost three. Um, I This is one of my favorite versions, because I really love Iron Lad and Loki, and when people don't run it, it always makes me a little sad. Because sometimes you miss Loki, and you really want to see Loki in Loki decks, and Iron Lad gives you an extra shot at it. Um, Miss Marvel is great because it's a lot of stats, and you need stats to win games of Snap. And Iron Lad hitting that would be good, too. Nebula is mostly locked down, but she goes in some high evo and some zoo because of her cost. Her hidden power is really controlling your opponent's play, and Galactus loves that, as we said in the Galactus section. 1-1, one, one, each turn your opponent doesn't play a card here, plus 2 power, except the turn you play this. This is a nice Darkhawk list. Does anyone want to share a lockdown list? Uh, I'm worried about sharing too much lockdown right now with um, War Machine tomorrow. So look, this is our standard good cards list, right? Nebula is just a nice card to play in this deck. She works well with Cull and along with Korg and Nightcrawler. Darkhawk is freaking huge in this type of list. Um, if you can win that lane, Omega Red is great. Ms. Marvel is great. It's a very, 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 very strong list. Um, yeah, I built this one. Next up, we have Nico. Nico has seven spells. I'm not even going to try to list them. They change each turn. Um, she's going to bounce, destroy, and phoenix. She goes well with hit monkey, kitty, and werewolf, and bounce. X-23 and null and destroy. And she is required for phoenix force with phoenix and ghost spider. She can fit into Thanos and some versions of Loki or Zoo too, but those are the main places. I'm very curious if she ends up back in Thanos after some recent changes. This is our standard destroy list where she is excellent. I told you I was going to keep sharing destroy. I'm going to tell you, I don't love Shangan destroy, but I get it. Um, X-23 is stellar. Sorry, uh, Nico is stellar here because she blows something up sometimes or gives Deadpool plus two power or whatever she does or makes you a copy of an already eat everything Venom. She is awesome and you should play her. Pixie is 2-1. Shuffle the base cost of all cards in your deck that started there. But, like, they can shuffle and end up back where they started, which is obnoxious. She's hard to use. Um, <laughs> I even typed Coulson here. She both needs and is shut down by Mobius, not Coulson. 
I've been calling Mobius Coulson for a week, and I don't know why. Two weeks now, and I don't know why. She both needs and is shut down by Mobius. Otherwise, she needs Beta Ray Bill or Haivo. She works fine in both. She's not great, but she is very fun. Here is a Captain Kerr deck that uses her to great effect. This is my favorite deck with Pixie. It's the deck I play most with Pixie. It's real good. Real fun. All right. Um, Proxima's in every discard list. So, Hello or Apocalypse list, which means Modok and Corvus, occasionally Black Knight, Meek, Samurai, or Dokken, but Modok and Corvus are up absolute requirements. When this is discarded, jumps to your lowest power location that isn't full, and you get a free 7 power just because. This is Ankh's Discard Dracula, just another version of Discard Dracula. We're going th recycling through them. This one runs a Swordmaster for shits and giggles and a gambit. Um, I wanted to show this one because it's a little cheaper in that it doesn't run Corvus, and finding these without Corvus is tough. But they don't have to run Corvus. They're playable either way. Shaw is only a Surfer deck. Sometimes he goes with Dokken, so he goes with Surfer and Dokken. But... Since uh, Hope is three, he's always going to go with Hope from now on. Um, he's, again, a pretty bad season pass card. This card. When this card permanently gains power, it gains plus two power. I think he needs a buff. I don't know what that buff is, but I think he needs a buff of some kind. I think starting him as a five is probably the idea, the, the ideal place to start. This is our standard surfer list right now. Um, and guess what? He goes in it. He's really good with Nakia, he's really good with the Koi, he's really good with Surfer. If you get two of those off, he's a key card to the deck. If you only get one off, he's good. Next up, Selene. Uh, one, two. Afflict with the low, uh, lowest power card in each player's hand, negative three. She's bad. Junk decks can run her, but probably shouldn't. And junk decks mean Annihilus and Eliath and Galactus. For example, here's a list. This is uh, Lufku's week one list, which I think we talked about already. Oops, sorry, this video's been going on for a long time, so I accidentally repeated a card. My bad, y'all. Silk. Sorry, so the reason I repeated this and didn't remember is because she's not good in many decks. So finding a deck that she's good in, it had to be reused. Silk is in Spotlight Caches for another day, or, sorry, Spotlight Caches starting tomorrow. 2-5, after any card is played here, this moves to another. She is required for move decks and Cerebro 5. Specifically, her style of move decks, not like classic Human Torch move. Uh, her style of move decks, well, we saw one earlier, so I'm not going to belabor the point, but she is required in that. She's been power crept. She used to be in occasional good stuff things, but she kind of got power crept out because they released a few two sixes and cards that operate like two sixes. She likes Hope, Kitty Pride, Jeff, Elsa, and sometimes Eliath. Here's an example of a Silky Smooth deck. We did one earlier. Again, really good card for Craven, for Angela for Hope, for Elsa. Scar, a season pass card, who is uh, 611, cost two less for each of your cards that is 10 or more power. There was a quick moment where he was amazing in Thanos, which could happen again, and he is protected by Kara, so they're good friends, who's his mother. Um, he likes Ramp, so Corvus and Hope. Big Dumb Idiots is made for him, but outside of that, the occasional Black Knight deck, and that's it. He's a okay card. I don't know how else to play it. He can be very good. Mobius really hurts him, and so does his lack of homes. This is a Thanos Hello list. I like him a lot in this version of Thanos. Um, this can still run Lockjaw because of Black Swan. I don't remember who made this. I wish I did. This was in some tournament, and it was really good. Um, I think this is still a really solid list. Again, play it. I don't think you'll be sad. Supergiant has a good deck or two, usually paired with Eliath and Patriot. She's also got Tribunal Combo and Dokken Combo. 4-5, all cards played next turn, don't reveal until the game ends. I'm convinced she's going to be great, but she's in no way a requirement. This is Perry Manilow's Vampire Slayer. Again, we looked at this earlier. Um, I didn't remember the earlier, sorry friends. This should probably be the Patriot version that runs her. But hey, she is very good in a lot of decks. Hello. Hi Noah, my son just got home. What are you doing here? Okay. Okay, I'm recording, little boy, so I'm going to continue, okay? Okay, sorry. No big deal. So, Thanos is a 6-10 at the start of the game, shuffles all six Infinity Stones in the deck. If you don't know Thanos, you haven't been playing much Marvel Snap. He keeps getting nerfed, but he's still probably the best. He goes with Lockenberg, Jeff, Call, Blob. Um, he can also go with, like, 20 other cards. He is the best big card in the game until they nerf him into Oblivion, which I think is going to happen relatively soon, but I've been saying that for two months now, so... Uh. He's really hard to kill without a redesign. Bye. All right. 
This is a nice Thanos list. I'm just trying to find you different Thanos list, folks. Um, that runs Kara to protect your blob and Thanos. I don't know. Kara seems probably wrong here. That should just be um, an extra card. But I, this one had Nico in it. Bye. I love you. See you later. So this is a good deck, right? This is a powerful card, powerful deck. You can play it. Um, I don't know, man. It's Thanos. Like, how, how much do you need me to tell you about Thanos right now Marvel Snap? It's the best deck. If you want, I wrote a whole article about it on Marvel Snap. So. Rolf by Knights of 4-4. We're almost done. Rolf by Knights of... Oh, I didn't put hope in this. All right. Hope is tier one. Good. Get hope. Next. Werewolf is a 4-4. After you play a card, uh, move, there, move it there to gain plus two power if it has an on reveal. He's not in a great spot right now. He's been one of the best cards in the game. He was the best card in the game when he was a 3-3. Ooh, my son just yelled outside. I don't know why. I think my wife might be home, too. Eh, what are you going to do? Got to finish this video, right, friends? So he's good with Thor's sometimes. Um, so Beta Ray Bill. He's good with Bounce sometimes, so Black Swan or Hit Monkey. And he's always good with Zebu, so Cull or Loki can go with him. He is also sometimes in a Nihilist X, for example. He's really good on this list, except this list is no longer as good because Thanos basically crowded out. Can this list be meta again? Maybe. I think it's worth testing if Thanos goes away. Um, it's a cool list. It's a, He's a very powerful card in it. He can be hard to use because his synergy doesn't always go with the Annihilus synergy. Oh, crap. <laughs> I didn't write up X-23. I'll just do it manually because it's not hard. Told you somewhere on this giant slideshow is going to be messed up. Again, uh, I'm doing this on my anniversary the night before vacation. Shh. X-23, when this is discarded or destroyed, generated a random location to get uh, next turn plus one energy. It's a must-have for destroy list. It only goes in destroy list, but it goes in every freaking destroy list forever. Um, I wanted to show a different destroy list because we've shown a few here. So this is Nimrod destroy. Uh, it goes with null. You don't need other high series cards for it, but you can have them. It goes with null. The other car high series card it's most commonly featured with is Nico. So if you have those cards, it's really good. Um, this version, again, I want to show you something different, is a Nimrod Grandmaster deck. Sorry. Yeah, Nimrod Grandmaster deck, so you can do it here too. It basically just gives you an opportunity to do extra stuff without like and destroy extra stuff. X-23 is great. All right. Target list for Series 5. So the best. Thanos, Hope, Mockingbird, Loki, Corvus. Good job putting commas. Eliath, Annihilus, Black Knight, Evolutionary, and Tribunal. Thanos is a deck. Hope is in every deck. Mockingbird is absurdly powerful. Loki is a deck. Corvus is two decks. Eliath is the best finisher. Annihilus is a package. Black Knight is a package. Evolutionary is a deck. Tribunal is like two decks. Cool? Basically, you have to be a whole-ass deck to yourself go in everything or be Mockingbird. Um, and again, these are in a loose order from best to worst. <sighs> loose. Needed packages. Needed pieces. Sorry, you need Jeff because he's one of the best cards in the game. You need Ms. Marvel. You need X-23 to play discard. To play, sorry, destroy. You need Iron Lad because, well, he's great. Like, right, Jeff, Ms. Marvel, Iron Lad just go in 50 decks. X-23, you need for destroy. Blob, you need for Thanos generally good cards. These are just good cards in like 15 different shells. Uh, Call Obsidian, Elsa, Nebula, Gladiator, Nico. They go in more decks than the needed pieces, but they're just generally a tier down in power, at least in my opinion. And the cards you need for specific decks are Proxima, Beta Ray Bill, Kyara, Silk, Hercules, and Shaw. And again, those last two, eh, Kyara, Hercules, and Shaw could fall down a level pretty easily. Proxima, Beta, and Silk are much more needed. Wolf by Night is fine. It might be higher, but it's really hard to tell. Same thing for Scar, Cannonball, Black Swan, Galactus, and Supergiant. I think these are all good cards, but they, none of them have amazing homes and are terrible. Bad cards. Pixie, Grandmaster, Jean, and Selene. You don't need them really for anything. Pixie is borderline good. Grandmaster will be good. The other two are just, like, terrible. And then there's Kang tier, which is Kang, which is just the worst card in the game. Cool. All right, that's the end of our tier list. Hopefully you find this useful. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, I'll be back tomorrow with my review of War Machine. Certain tiers of support on our Patreon come with on-air thanks before we get out of here. So I want to thank Abigail Gieslin, Mandatory Burnout, 
Cables, David G. Wingfield, Direwolf, L.A.B., Fothar Newman, who you should follow on YouTube, please, Good Dog Gamer, Inc., Jay Nevery, J.D. McDonaldino, Akila Palazzo, Keratix Lee, Koire, KCH, Doku, Philip Bratkovich, Haplo, Kenny Loggins, who lives in the Danger Zone, Rob Silverman, The Biza, J. Bussy, X-Force V, Skippy G, Tommy Nyquist, Black Dahlia, The Great Kazoo, Jessica Gamble, our mod models, my former student, Louis Antunes, Matt H., Mikey Hijinks, No Flex, Ocularis, Pretty Chill, Seamus, Spike Jones, Two Ties, The Pirate King Tucker, The Homie Min, and of course, Gunny T., who you'll see doing a video for me on Wednesday and can check out doing Snap Jud Judgments League commentary on Sunday's video yesterday. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully this tier list provides you use. Let me know in the comments where you agree and disagree with the list. Hit that sub button, hit that like, hit that comment. Check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash snapjudgments if you'd like to do more. We'll see you tomorrow for another Snap Take. Really appreciate all the support. Peace.